So today we're going to go ahead and uh, do assignment number five, basic shirt draft. Uh, here's the flat sketch for it. As you can see, it's a basic uh, sleeveless shirt. Uh, we're going to utilize the manipulations of dart rotation on the front and uh, darts into seams or creating princess seams on the back. Uh, we're also going to slightly shape the neckline uh, from a sort of round crew neck into a sort of shallow square neck. Uh, we're also going to be adding a button placket as well as finishing with facings. So let's get to it. Um, you're going to use the size 8 bodice sloper found in the slopers uh, module on Brightspace. Uh, when you open it up, you'll see that there is a sleeve included in the sloper. However, we don't need it. So you can go ahead, select it, and delete it straight off. Now also remember that you're going to have to go to Tools, Preferences, and Change from Centimeters to Inches. You should be used to that by now. Once we have changed to Inches, we can go ahead and start our drafting. Now, uh, right now, what I'm going to do is start with dart rotation. Now, there's a whole video on dart rotation, so I'm not going to go into the specifics on it. I'm just going to go on how it relates to this project. So um, I encourage you, if you were not there in class, to go and watch the dart rotations uh, theory and principle video. Um, but to do this assignment, we're going to go ahead and cut out the dart, which is where we start with our dart rotation. And of course, we're going to use the cut piece tool to do that. Uh, we're going to leave the seam width at zero because, of course, there is not going to be a seam here. Once we have gone ahead and cut out the dart, I'm going to take the dart piece out and delete it. I am now going to determine where my new dart should be. And if we pop on back to the uh, flat, it gives us a specific specification for that. Um, it says that the dart should be placed four inches below the armpit along the side seam. All right, can do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if there's any other darts or, or points or anything that might get in the way of my measurement from the armpit, which of course is this point right here. And there is, there's this little guy right here. So I'm just gonna select it and it's not really shaping anything. So you can either go ahead and turn off the grating or in this case, just delete it. I'm now going to use the um, point on contour tool to go ahead and place a new point four inches below my armpit point, which of course, if we travel around the piece in a clockwise direction, this is the point in question. This would be the next point. And of course that makes this the previous point. So this is our next point. So let's go ahead and put in four inches. Let's make it a nice grading point so we can see it and say, okay. Now I'm going to switch back to that cut uh, piece tool and cut from the point we just made to the tip of our dart. Still not going to add any seam allowance. Now what I'm going to do is use the join pieces tool to, and let's zoom in there, join the two pieces of my dart legs together. And this, of course, will open up my new dart. Now, as we can see, of course, the preview line is going between the two points that I selected, but the segment preview line is not. It should be going between my two dart legs. So if it's not going in the correct direction, click Change Direction, and we'll see that line where it should be. Once it's there, say OK. And we have gone ahead now and joined our dart, closing the original dart and opening the new dart. 
We can go ahead and curve and round out just to clean up that waist a little bit. I'm going to just delete a point and go ahead and change that one point into a curved point just to sort of smooth and clean up the waistline. If there's any additional little extra line or anything that's there making it messy, I'm going to delete it away. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use that move point tool just to move the tip of that dart away, half an inch to an inch away from the apex. Remember, we always do that. The sloper darts on the front are going to be right at the apex. This will make dart rotation and seam uh, drafting easier. But once we have drafted the darts that we want to, we always want to move that dart tip about a half an inch to an inch away from the apex. And this will prevent a sort of pointy nipple thing going on. Uh, sort of give it a nice smoother round shape. Now we can leave the dart here as negative space. That's perfectly fine. That's all right. And now we have completed the dart rotation. Hooray! Now let's see what's next. Well, we've done our dart rotation. We have our dart coming in here, four inches below the armpit. And let's go ahead and finish off the front. What we're going to have to do is that neckline as well as that button placket. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the button or the neckline first. The neckline should be done before the, you do the button placket. And if I scroll down, I have a zoom in on what the neckline should look like. It's going to have a five inch drop and a three inch span from side to side here. Remember that in the middle here is the center front. So if it's three inches from bottom point to bottom point, it'll be one and a half inches from the center front. Remember, we always work in a half. This is showing both sides. The three inches is, is going across that center front. So to do it properly, to understand it properly and take it at the center front, we have to divide that three inches by one half over here, 50% over here, 50% over here. So from that center front over here will be one and a half inches. All right, well, let's draft out our front neck, cut it out, and then we'll be ready to apply the uh, button placket. So what I want to do is I want to create a, an inch uh, a line that comes down five inches and will be three uh, inches, or one, I'm sorry, one and a half inches from uh, right here. So what I'll do is I'm going to use my draft tool for this, and I'm going to start with a sort of guideline. Now I might need to adjust this a little bit, but I'm going to adjust and give myself a guideline on what is one and a half inches from that center front point. So I'm going to click here to start it. And yep, I'm snapping on that point. That's where I want to start. I'm going to say, okay. Then I'm going to come over and we know it goes in here. And I'm going to click again. Now in the horizontal or x-axis box, I'm going to type in negative 1.5. That's the distance I need it to be. In the up, down, vertical, or y-axis, I'm going to make sure that it's zero. Because as we look on the flat, that portion of our neckline is completely flat. Doesn't go up, doesn't go down. And I'm going to say, OK. I'm going to now right click to finish drafting. Now this gives me a little guide on where my other point should be. Now I'm going to click up here to do the other sign. Yes, I do want to start there at the shoulder and I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to bring it down. 
I'm going to click here at the point. Now this drop, so I'm, it's now measuring from that other point that I clicked on. I don't want to measure from that. I want to measure from here, which is my last point. All right. Now, as we can see, our little guideline is a bit too high. We're going to be dropping the neck quite a bit because what I'd like to do is drop it five inches. That's dropping us quite a bit farther down. But that's okay. We're just going to move that down as well. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. And right click, finish drafting. Now we're still in line with this point here because we clicked on it to begin with, remember? And I didn't adjust the x-axis or horizontal axis, only the y up and down or vertical axis. So this is still perfectly in line with that one and a half inches I've already measured. Because of that, I know this is still one and a half inches from my center front. To double check, we can just continue the line back out. Yes, I do want to start there. Snap point. And do I want to snap it to that point? Yes. Now I'm going to bring it back out. And as we'll see, the x value will be one and a half inches. Of course, we want to measure from this point. I don't want to measure along the segment. That's what it's asking for right now. It's measuring along this segment from this point to this point. I don't want to do that. I want to measure from the last point that I made, which is this guy right here. All right? So here we see one and a half inches. Perfect. I want to make sure this is a nice zero to make sure that it is perfectly straight. It's going to intersect that center front at a nice perpendicular angle. So we say, okay, now my neckline is made, it's drafted. All I have to do is cut it out. Oh, I didn't hit okay, but that's okay. It made a point for me anyways. <laughs> All right, and we'll cut up here, boop. Now my neckline is cut out. I can take the piece that's no longer going to be part of that neckline. I can take it out and delete it. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and make our button placket. Now let's look at the specifications for the button placket. We're gonna have not, uh, nine buttons at a uh, size of 30 line. Now I have not specified the specific width of our button placket. We have to determine that ourselves. Uh, it should, of course, be a good size, an appropriate size for 30 line buttons. So let's first determine what 30 line buttons are. Remember, line sizes are a size common for buttons, but you can easily look up a line size chart if you would like to know what the line size are in inches or millimeters. Remember that these charts typically show the diameter of the button size, not the radius, which Optitex uses. So you will have to define this number in half to find the radius. Here we have 30 line. It is 0.75 inches or three-fourths of an inch. Three-fourths of an inch or 0.75 divided by 2 is 0.375. We can use this number to enter into Optitex. 
So, flipping back to Optitex, I'm going to go ahead and go to the toolbox and go and find my buttons tool, which is somewhere. Sorry, it's in the points and notches, wasn't obvious. Um, so go to your points and notches tab. And uh, what we wanna do is we wanna add a line of buttons. We don't wanna add a single button, we wanna add multiple buttons. So we're going to click on that line of buttons tool. And I want to apply them on the center front, of course. Uh, buttons are always on the center front and we extend uh, the piece uh, to accommodate them, but we're going to start with keeping them on the center front here. I'm going to click at the start, that center top center front point, and it's going to ask me, is this exactly where you want to start your line of buttons? And it is. So I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of my center front and click there. And it's going to go ahead and ask me if I want to, uh, is that exactly where I want to end my buttons? And yes, it is. So now we get the buttons dialog box and along the line, we want nine buttons and we're going to have that radius of 0.375. I don't want any buttons right before the line or after the line. This is maybe you'd have a little gap and have a, a one leading in or, or trailing after. We don't want that for this project. We just want nine buttons along our button placket at a radius of 0.375. Now the little X's are giving us a preview, so that's very good. And we can hit OK, and we get a preview of our buttons. Now to determine the size of our button placket, I'm going to go ahead and drag a guideline out and place it just to the side of my buttons. There should be a small space in between the button edge and the guideline. The guideline should not touch the edge of the buttons. There should be at least about a sixteenth of an inch of space between the edge of the button and your guideline. This will give a little bit of space between the edge of the button and the edge of your button placket. You don't want them coming right up to the edge and you certainly don't want them coming over the edge. Once your guideline is in a good position, you can go ahead and use your measure tool to measure from your center front to your guideline. Again, try to keep it as straight as possible you will of course get your X distance, use your X distance, uh, not the Y, in case you do go up or down a little bit, you want just that X distance or that horizontal distance. And I've gotten about 0.49 uh, for convenience sake, I'm just gonna round that up to half an inch. Now what that does is it tells me what the half of my distance of my button placket will be, right? Because my button placket spans from this side. I'll draw out another guideline so we can show you. It spans from this side of the buttons all the way to this side of the buttons. And if I really wanted to find the full uh, 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 button placket, I could do this, of course, and just measure the distance between here that would give me the full distance. I'm going to guess that it's going to be close to about an inch, of course, because half of my button placket was 0 0.5. Yep, there it is. One inch. So my button placket, my, the desired width of my button placket will be one inch. Now, if we remember what the formula for our button placket was, 
It is the desired button placket width, which is one inch. And we're going to multiply that number, whatever we want our button placket to be, whatever width we want it to be, we're going to multiply that number by 1.5 or one and a half. Now that, of course, is going to give us 1.5 because any number times one is itself. But this is now going to give us the uh, extension amount that we need to add to the center front. All right, so we need to extend the center front front by one and a half inches. All righty. So to do that, I'm going to use my extend in parallel tool, which is somewhere. Here it is. No. Sorry, they took the shortcuts bar out of the new one. And I forgot where it is in the toolbox. Here it is. I'm sorry. Extend in parallel. Sorry, this one. Extend in parallel, not create parallel. We want to extend in parallel. And this is the first time we're using this tool. It's a really fantastic tool. We, of course, are going to use it uh, for uh, creating button plackets. But it's, it's very handy if you want to create any kind of tiered garment. So uh, maybe a skirt that has different layers. Uh, just make one and then use that extend parallel to create the others on copies. Uh, not only can it extend, but it can crop. So if you extend with negative numbers, so if I have a skirt and I want to shorten it two inches, if I extend in parallel negative two inches, it'll crop and shorten that skirt at the hem. Uh, two inches. So we're going to apply our extended parallel, of course, going in a clockwise motion around the figure. Uh, so we start at the top and end at the bottom of our center front, uh, saying this is the edge that we want to extend. It's going to ask us how much we want to extend it by. So I'm going to tell it one and a half inches, as we have calculated, and say, OK. Now remember that this gives us not only enough to finish our button placket so our buttons aren't hanging off, but it gives us enough to fold back and create a backing for our button placket, which is going to be important because we're going to create uh, a, an interfacing piece. So we'll um, apply some interfacing to this portion, fold it back, stitch it down, and it's going to create a nice sort of uh, stiffer, thicker, better structure for us to apply our buttons and our buttonholes to. So what we want to see, of course, is a space enough for our button placket itself, our buttons to sit, and that same space enough to fold back uh, and fully back that button placket area. So very good, we've gone ahead and created our button placket. The last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add a notch where the button placket is going to fold back. And just we'll clean that up. Of course, it should be one inch, say okay. And one inch down here, okay. This is going to let us know, because of course those guidelines are not going to be there. Sorry, I don't want to do the notch ones. Let's get this that selected. I, I'm not going to have those guidelines there when I complete and print out the project. The guidelines, right, are only for our drafting purposes. So what we need to know is we need to know how much of the extension we're folding back when we sew and finish our button placket. And those, what the, that's what those notches are doing for us. All right. Well,
congratulations. You've just finished at least the drafting portion of our uh, front bodice. That means we can go ahead and finish it. Um, I'm going to use my seam allowance tool. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and this is going to get uh, a half an inch seam allowance everywhere but the armhole and neck. Uh, because the armhole and neck are actually going to be finished with facing. We're going to do that a little bit later. Um, and when we have sort of smaller or sharp or sharply curved areas like that, and we're going to attach a collar or a facing, uh, we tend to try to make the seam allowance a little bit smaller. It just reduces that seam allowance am amount or reduces the bulk and allows it to come on a little bit easier and lay a bit uh, smoother and looks a little bit nicer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll start here. Remember, when we apply our seam allowance, we work in a clockwise fashion. I'm going to stop here because we're going to do a slightly larger hem allowance. And I'm going to add half an inch on my button placket. I'm going to continue around and apply one inch on my hem. I'm going to continue up to the armpit and add a half an inch. Continue around and add a quarter of an inch on my armhole. I'm going to continue and add half an inch on my shoulder seam. And let's finish it up. Oops. I canceled because I didn't click right on the point and it was adding its own point. As you can see, I'm getting the point box. I want to make sure I get right on that point. Didn't want to collect there. And all the way back to where we began. And let's go ahead and add a quarter of an inch on our neckline. So now we have uh, our, our seam allowance. Uh, again, inch on the hem, a uh, quarter inch on the armhole and neckline, half an inch everywhere else. Uh, last thing I want to do is update my pattern piece information. So this is going to become my front shirt. Again, it's now a finished pattern piece, so I shouldn't see that sloper label on it. Now the uh, Sloper does have some text information already. So instead of making new text information, I can go ahead and simply change the text by selecting it with the arrow tool. Uh, you can right click, go to attributes, but if your internal properties box is popped up, you can go there. Uh, click on the text is the first thing that should be there if you have the text box selected. Uh, if you click on the ellipses, the box will pop back up again. And I'm going to give it a style number. Again, whatever style number you want. Just make sure that all your style numbers are the same. Uh, size I can keep because uh, the size hasn't changed. It's still a size 8. And for this, we're going to do cut to self. Of course, we got to have a right and left half. Separates over that uh, center front line with that button placket. I'm going to hit OK, and then there is my updated pattern information. All right. The last thing that we're going to do is we have to create, remember I mentioned that interfacing piece. We have to create a pattern piece for that interfacing piece. Now that interfacing piece is just going to sit right here. It's going to be stitched on here, and then it's going to be folded back. Finish this edge, we fold it back again. So it's going to be this width of our button placket, we know that's one inch, and it's going to be the length of our center front. Now let's go ahead and use our measure tool to measure our uh, center front. Uh, we have a distance of 12.38. Uh, All right, so I'm going to go to piece, new piece, create rectangular piece. This is going to be called my button placket. 
facing piece. The length is going to be the length that we just calculated or measured for our center front. And the width is going to be the width of our button placket. Alrighty. There is our piece. Let's move it up. I'm, you don't have to rotate it, but I'm just going to rotate it. Just you guys know how I feel about grain lines facing upwards. Not that if you use fusible, fusible doesn't even have a grain line, so it doesn't matter. But it will also sort of sit nicely. And I can double check. So I just want to see that that piece fit very nicely uh, between the notches and the edge and, and not extend too much farther up or down, just sort of end right where it should. So you can double check that too with your piece just to make sure. Now, this is kind of a funny piece, a little bit of an exception. It does need seam allowance, but it only needs seam allowance on one long edge. It's a little bit different than we're used to. We're used to putting seam allowance everywhere that is not an on-fold line. But this guy, he's only going to have seam allowance on that one edge there. Now, he needs text information, uh, pattern information just like any other pattern piece. So I'm going to add that style number, same style number, same size. In this cutting information, we have two button plackets that need finishing. So cut to interfacing. So it's not going to be cut from self or any other kind of fabric. It's only going to be cut out of interfacing. Okie doke. If it looks a little big, you can use your arrow tool to kind of squish it into the piece a little bit better. Don't worry if a little is hanging over. You don't have to worry if you're printing out, but that's okay. If it's a little bigger, it helps me see. <laughs> So now that we have gone ahead and completed our front, let's go ahead and see what we need to do for the back. And rest assured that the back is much easier than the front. The front is uh, uh, the more complicated uh, part. So if we take a look at the back, the back is fairly simple and uh, uh, we don't have to do any dart rotation. Um, and uh, if we remember from class, uh, the Princess seams are done the same way as we do them for the skirt. So uh, it is very easy. We just have to go ahead and make sure um, of a couple things. So we have the seam coming 50% uh, in the middle of the shoulder. So half the shoulder seam is here and half the shoulder seam is here. And uh, this is actually quite easy because if we go back and take a look at our uh, um, sloper, let's go ahead and make sure we're just going to double check that this dart is in the middle of our shoulder seam. And it is. Of course, I know that because if it's in the middle, the uh, distance from this point to this point is going to be the same as the distance from this point to this point. And I just measured it, and it was. So to go ahead and make this princess seam, all we got to do is go ahead and get to cutting. We got to cut out our darts. There was no specified placement for the princess seam. So we're just going to assume looks like it was where the dart was originally. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go and start by cutting out both of the darts. The shoulder and waist dart. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and select them and delete them. They are no longer needed.
This guy's hard to do. Let me try to zoom, zoom in there if you can't get him. Oh, didn't work. Yep, this will work. All right. Now that both of our darts are cut out, it's as simple as cutting from one dart to another. We can put a little curve in it if you want, or just go directly, doesn't really matter. If we take a look back at the uh, example, looks like maybe there's a little bit of a, a little curve. Oops, sorry. A little bit of a curve there. Just add a little bit of a curve there. Just by adding one point that's curved in between and then going and clicking on that other point right there. All right, easy peasy, like I said, you're done uh, now with the drafting of the back. Let's go ahead and finish our back. Uh, if we take a look back at our example, we see that the center back is on fold, so we're not gonna have any seam allowance there. We are going to maintain that quarter inch for our neckline. Half an inch everywhere else for shoulder and princess seam. And one inch for our hem. Same thing up here. Shoulder and princess are getting half an inch. Armhole getting quarter of an inch. Side seam half an inch. And hem getting one inch. Okie dokie. All right. Let's go ahead and Rename our piece uh, pieces. This would be the center back. Sorry. This would be the side back. We're going to go ahead and change our text, add in our style number. We of course can keep our size. This will be cut one self, because of course our center back's on fold. So I'm also going to add a on fold marker right down there. And again, if we want to make it line up with the fold really nicely, we can change the angle in the internal properties window and make an adjustment if we want with our arrow tool. There it is, there's our on fold. Now, because we split this in two, there's uh, we split this in two. There is no uh, text box on this guy, so I have to start anew with my text tool. Again, we're going to go ahead and use the same style number and size, and we're going to cut two self of this guy of our side back shirt. Congratulations, you now just drafted the back. We have one more step to do. As you notice in the instructions, it says that the arm and neck holes are finished with a facing. So we have to go ahead and create a facing. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with what a facing is. Now in this instance, we have both uh, uh, an armhole and neck 
line in need of a facing. So what I'm going to do is combine my arm and neckline facing. Okay, they're going to be one piece, one piece for the front, one piece for the back. Now the way that we're going to create our facing in Optitex, something like that extend in parallel tool, but instead of extend in parallel, um, it is the uh, uh, create parallel tool, keyboard shortcut P. Now, when you guys make uh, facings in uh, your draping or your drafting class, you make a parallel line that's about two inches from the edge that you want to finish. And that's basically what you're going to do here. So when we're making a facing in Optitex, we're going to use this Create Parallel tool, and we're going to work always in a clockwise manner. In this case, we're going to go ahead and uh, click where we want to begin the facing. On the case of the front, it's, it's right here at the armpit. That's where our facing is going to begin. And it's going to come up, finish the armhole and the neckline, and end not at the very end, because remember that bit gets folded back. It gets folded back when we finish our button placket. So I'm going to bring it not to the very edge there, but to the notch that we created where the button placket is going to be folded back. So now what it's asking me is, how far from this edge would you like this line to be? Now, as I mentioned, we typically use about two inches for our facing. Uh, this is wiggly. If you need it to be a little bit facing, uh, thinner, you can. If you want it to be a little bit thicker, you can. But two inches is a good sort of standard measurement to use. So I'm going to type in two. That means two inches distance from this edge. And say OK. Now, as you can see, it's gone ahead and made a line that is a nice parallel uh, from this part to the other part, um, uh, all the way from the armhole to the neckline. You see, it went all the way out to the edge, which is a bit unfortunate. So what I'm going to do is drag out a guideline and plop it right where I want my facing to end. Now what we're going to use is we're going to use that build piece tool. Remember the build piece tool? We used it all the way back on the skirt sloper, keyboard shortcut B in our build and cut box. Now I want to make the facing piece. So what I'm going to do is with that build piece tool, I'm going to select all the areas until the entire facing shape is highlighted. Now we had that little line down here, which was cutting it in half, so I just had to click twice. And it also recognized my guideline, so it's not extending it all the way out here, which is what I want. I don't want to include that part in the facing. Now that the entire area that I want to be my facing is highlighted, I can right-click Finish Drafting. Now what's happened it might not seem apparent first, but it has created that facing piece as a new separate piece, which is what I want. I want that facing to be separate. I can delete this little line if I want. And what's also nice is it has gone ahead and recreated the seam allowances used on the piece um, uh, that it was taken from which is what I want. I want those seam allowances to match because it is going to be stitched along here. I do also have to add a seam allowance along my front and bottom. The bottom seam allowance uh, the bottom of our facing does not get sewn to anything, not in this case. Sometimes it gets sewn to lining, uh, but we always add seam allowance to the bottom of our facing. Uh, and this allows us to fold back or zigzag stitch or give sort of some sort of finish to the bottom of our facing. We don't leave raw edges, 
never, never. So uh, our facing is no exception. Um, so when we have to finish our facing, that little bit of extra seam allowance is going to help us do that. Let's add a half an inch there. All right, there we go. Now, just like all the other pieces, our facing piece is a pattern piece. And that means that we have to give it a piece name. Front facing seems appropriate. And it also needs um, text information. Now, it's also copied the text from, if you can see here, uh, this little piece, it kind of took it so we can actually use it. Let's just move it up a little bit so it's not in the hole there. I'm just going to move it by adjusting the size until it's in a nice place. Now, most of this we can use again. So when I come to the internal properties and go to the text box to change it, um, I don't need to change the style number, don't need to change the size. We are going to cut two out of self, but we are also going to cut it out of interfacing. Remember that facing is the name of the piece and interfacing gets its name because it goes on the inner part of the facing. So on all facing pieces, we cut it out of self and we cut it out of interfacing. So this will get four pieces total to self to interfacing. Okay. Let's do it on the back. Now what we have on the back is we've actually split the back in two, right? Because we have that princess scene. Now, our back facing is not going to be in two. It will actually be one piece just like this one right here. So we're going to have one extra step involved when we make uh, our back piece. It will be easy. Don't worry. So we're going to go back to that Create Parallel tool. And let's start on the back. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a piece for both back pieces, center and side, and then simply join them together. So I'm going to start here on my back neck and then come up here to the shoulder. It remembered I liked my facings at two inches. So we say, OK. Now I'm just going to do the same thing over here. We're going to start at that princess seam, basically where we left off, and come back and end at the armpit. Notice that this is backwards from what I did on the front because I have to go in that clockwise direction. I'm going to continue just like I did on the front with my build piece tool. And instead of selecting all the pieces all at once, i.e. coming over here, I'm going to do first just the center back and then the side back. Sorry about that. Now I have two pieces and I'll bring them over here to show you. So very easily, all I have to do now is simply join them. And of course, yes, you're right. We're going to use the Join Pieces tool to do that. There it is. Now we're going to finish it off just like we finished the uh, other facing piece. Of course, let's go ahead and give it a better name. Piece 5 is a terrible pattern piece name. The front was front facing. So you're right, you guessed it. This one is going to be back facing. It's got this little line left over. I'm just going to delete it off. It's just not necessary anymore. I'm going to add seam allowance. Now uh, I'm going to add it to the bottom, but because my center back is on fold, my center back of my facing is also going to be on fold. So I am not going to add seam allowance to the center back of my back facing. What I am going to do is add an on-fold marker. And let's let that 
line a little bit better. And we can go ahead and adjust it. A little bit better. Let's let it shrink in there. Okay. Now I want to double check because looking at this, it looks an awful lot like the grain line is not aligning with my center back. Uh oh. Um, and this can happen quite a bit. Uh, our grain lines can sometimes get askew when joining pieces. So I'm just going to switch to my baseline tool, baseline direction tool, backslash, or you can find it in your baseline section, if we remember. And I'm just going to align it with my center back. As you can see, it adjusted that grain line um, uh, very nicely. And let's see if we can't get it a slightly different, better place. All right, well, that's fine. I just want to see if I can get that baseline to be in a better place on the piece. I did that first by trying to adjust it in the piece properties, and now I'm going to try new baseline. I put it up here. That's fine. At least it's on the piece. Now I'll go back and adjust that text again. Boop. There we go. All right. Um, last but not least, of course, we need our pattern information for this. Didn't copy over, uh, wasn't included, so we got to do it from scratch. Should be the same as all the other pieces. Size, of course, the same. This is going to be on fold, so we're only cutting one self and one interfacing. Good. And there we are. Let's double check to see if we did everything. Always good. We've got our nine 30 line buttons. We've got our princess seam and back. We have a facing that's finishing both the arm and neck holes. We have our shaped neckline. We have our rotated dart four inches below. So we are in good shape. So here we are, we have our finished um, sloper, I'm uh, sorry, pattern, and we're ready to save and submit it. So, congratulations guys, time to submit.